Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I've spoken before in the House uh, about the serious and outrageous behaviour that girls from Stroud High School in my constituency reported to me. Now, these are girls in their school uniform, very distinctive school uniform, that deal with public sexual harassment from men, uh, completely unwanted, just really <coughs> random comments sometimes, sometimes sexualised, sometimes <coughs> just um, really weird, actually. But you know, I, I, I listened to their experiences and they took the initiative of actually creating a survey. So they went round their school, you know, these really smart kids, um, and they discovered to their horror that there was girls as young as nine um, uh, who had experienced public sexual harassment. Now, We've all experienced it, we've spoken about that in the chamber today, and it ranges from being shouted at, um, it ranged on to, you know, from the funny, funny comments uh, that, 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 that some people think they're being funny, to being flashed or to being uh, far more serious incidents. But we saw from the Everyone's Invited campaign uh, that, that, that this is prevalent amongst schoolgirls uh, and school children. So I started investigating this, I started listening even more closely to my colleagues uh, and my excellent colleagues and the, and the fantastic work that has gone before prior to me joining this house and it became really obvious that, that things need to change. And in Stroud, sadly, we have had a series of rapes and sexual assaults. This is totally, totally devastating uh, for the victims and their families, but has also completely rocked our communities. I mean, this is a safe, beautiful Cotswolds town, similar to the Right Honourable Member for Tunbridge Wells said about his area, strong police, strong communities, um, and we now have women that are worried about going out. We now have women that are worried about going for a run during the day down our championed canal routes because one of the attacks was in broad daylight. Now, it, 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 this bill is not about rape, I get it, it's about public sexual harassment, but I am absolutely clear from speaking to the women and girls in my constituency, from li li listening to the experienced members and honourable members and right honourable members in this place, that the harassment on the street and the trolling that is happening online daily, hourly, to women and girls, which may be just keyboard warriors being idiots, but it is fueling physical abuse in the real world. I will do. I think she's making a really important and powerful point that we must never ever forget that there is, uncomfortable though we may find it, a pyramid of offending. Yeah. And whilst not every flasher becomes a rapist, every rapist has started somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And actually public sexual harassment can be the somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So would she agree with me that is one of the, the many reasons why we have to make sure it's stamped out at source. Yeah. 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 I, I completely agree and, and I, I think I, that's why I get so frustrated when people dismiss this as unnecessary uh, or going too far or too heavy-handed because it is a very short hop, skip and jump from shouting obscenities or being rude to a woman in a street to being rude in your own home uh, if that is your mentality. So I, I think it is absolutely, we have to make that connection, we have to keep making it strongly. And, and the, the advice was immediately when we had these horrendous incidents in Stroud, um, to, it was advice for women. Yeah. It was change your behaviour, yeah. it was change your clothes, it's exactly as the Honourable Member from Wolf and so said, it was don't wear your headphones, it was think a little bit more about where you're going to walk. Well, where, where do I want to walk in a beautiful Cotswolds the, uh, market <coughs> town? I want to walk everywhere and I don't want it to be. My, my sort of thought process is about whether I'm going to be attacked on any given day. So Stroud fought back. Now this is a very spirited place, very politically bouncy as anyone will know that <laughs> follows politics and my inbox is very bouncy. So I think that uh, anybody who thought they were going to get away with uh, attacking women and girls or being rude to women and girls in the street in my area were very, very wrong because we have all banded together to make changes and this is why I'm so in support of what's the right honourable member of Tombrook Wells is doing because it really reinforces that 
that it's not just our voices in all of our constituencies. We've got government support for a very uh, important bill. So I myself has led a successful campaign which the government has now supported to change the law and reduce anonymous abuse online, which, as I said, I think is completely connected to the real world. Hundreds of people in Stroud have marched on a number of occasions now specifically on these issues and our police and crime commissioner Chris Nelson and our police have joined those marches. That's a really important step. Um, he has made tackling violence against women and girls an absolute focus of his work and the honourable member for um, Walthamstow was talking about the police forces that were ahead of their curve. Gloucestershire is one of them uh, and I'm very proud of them for that although they have a lot more work to do. We held a public meeting uh, about these issues and even though we've been reporting uh, for uh, hate crimes and, and, and public harassment for much longer than other forces, uh, women um, were standing up saying they still did not feel comfortable going to the police. So w there is an awful lot of work to do and I know that the Gloucestershire Constabulary understand that. I've got fabulous constituents um, called Nikki Owen and Sydney uh, Anne McAllister. I met Sydney quite recently. They've launched a pressure group called This End Now. This Ends Now. They want to um, change the law and the media and they're challenging the, both the law and the media to do better, particularly with language. You know, where there is a rape, it should be reported as a rape in the media, not a sexual assault and not uh, run down in any way, shape or form. And I believe that they will be pleased. Committed women in my patch will be pleased to see what we're trying to do today. Um, I also encourage all members of the House, where my hair is getting complete, I don't know if it's going uh, so, <laughs> I always encourage all members of the House to look up the work of the Holly uh, Gizzard Trust. Um, this is a, f a family that was uh, devastated by the loss of um, their daughter and have gone on to campaign uh, and really change the lives of many other families uh, about domestic abuse and you know, they're, they're front and centre of supporting and fighting for women and girls in Gloucestershire. Um, we have Chrissy Lowry. Um, she is winning awards all over the place and she, after these rapes uh, uh, and incidents and after the rise of concerns about public sexual harassment from our schoolgirls, um, she's taken up uh, uh, the the baton and has created something called the Safe Space Campaign, um, and um, which stagecoach is now on board with the police or on board with lots of local businesses are, are doing. And she also, where, where there was an incident, she it was a very dark, dingy, scary tunnel, and she took the initiative of getting some amazing artists together, and we painted it. We painted it, Mr. Mm -hmm. It sounds very simple. My daughter and I went down, we put butterflies on the wall of this horrendous, uh, early dark tunnel, and it is now a beautiful beautiful um, open space and somewhere that people are comfortable going down uh, during the day uh, and, and at night we're looking at lighting we're looking at CCTV so these are these are not these are sort of small acts of kindness and, ex and, and sort of effort but they will all join up to make a difference um, Gloucestershire Police has also created something called the Flare app um, which is now being rolled out to other forces and it allows people to um, fill in uh, places where they are worried about around our, uh, the Stroud district and it will it creates basically a heat, heat map so the police know to go to uh, specific points of concern and it may be that the council can then come in and do uh, work in the area on things like CCTV so I, I think this is really innovative I think we can probably do more with the technology but I do um, uh, uh, we've got 3,000 people have downloaded it so I, I, I think it is uh, going pretty well uh, as a new uh, a new piece of kit. Um, so given that my community and constituents have done so much legwork and there are more examples but I, I, I won't go on and on, um, I think it's right in that we in this place are constantly reviewing the law. Um, uh, so following the advice from people like the Law Commission, very learned people spent a lot of time investigating. This bill uh, from the Right Honourable Member for Tom, Tom Rich Wells is, um, is assisting because we are creating the new law that deals with intentionally harassing or, or, or seeking to cause alarm and that is a gap in the legislation that we have 
in this place already. So, so I do welcome it. Um, but I also believe that there is, it is, it's right that there is a balance um, uh, in, in, in what we're trying to do and what would happen uh, in the event that somebody was pulled up for sexual harassment. Um, so I welcome the explanation about what will and will not result in imprisonment because I think the headlines that have, have resulted in, and challenges um, that have come out of this where uh, so even just trying to dismiss, you know, someone's going to get sent to prison because they, they wolf whistled. You know, it's, it's dismissive, isn't it? It's immediately dismissive. I think it's right that we've got to really uh, be clear about what this bill does and doesn't do um, and what the legislation will and will not do um, be, uh, and be clear about uh, uh, and be clear about how we've sought to achieve and strike the balance. The test is the intention to cause distress. I think that means that where somebody is being a plonker, that that is a very different test. We could deal with plonkers in other ways, but you know, we, we've got, it's, it's a serious test, the intention <coughs> to cause distress, and that will lead to hopefully prosecutions in the right places and will then lead to deterrence so we can start to change society and the culture at all. From giving way on that. Does she also recognise the point that I made earlier about adding to that the concept of foreseeable? Because the risk about intent is the young man who says, I didn't realise that this would be harassment when everybody else would do. So we have to make sure that when we're looking at intent, it is foreseeable that some behaviour could cause distress. Otherwise, we create a big loophole and we won't make the progress we want to make. I, I, I heard what she said earlier, and it's not something that I've looked at, but I understand that there are examples already uh, in, in this place in legislation, and I heard, I heard the, the challenge to the Minister to look carefully at this, so I think it is important. It, we cannot create legislation knowing that people are going to get let off the hook, or that people will learn how to respond when they are pulled up by the police. So this is why I think we've got to be clear about the balance, we've got to be clear about what it does and doesn't do, uh, and we've got to think through uh, a range of different examples uh, and, where, and the responses that will be given by the perpetrators so that the, this is tight uh, legislation. And I, I also, on that point, and the, the, the shadow minister uh, was clear about this. I, we've got, we've got to, we've got to avoid all men and boys being demonised. Uh, they're not all bad. They're not all plonkers. It, we, we know, we know that men and boys are very much part of the solution. With um, and, and early education in our schools on these issues is absolutely vital. But we also cannot m move away from the fact <coughs> that the incidents and the perpetrators are generally men in this issue. Um, so I, I think it's right to, to continue having that debate uh, and being really careful with our language uh, for, for men and boys as well. Um, but the reality is, uh, to conclude, that with only 26% of those who experience public sexual harassment reporting the incidents to the police, uh, no matter how scared, harassed or intimidated they have been uh, by the incident, um, and with examples like uh, that that was, that was robustly and passionately given by the Right Honourable Member for Romsey in Southampton North with the girl in the supermarket, she, I mean, that was a really sort of visual story of the nonsense that, that girls and women have to go through every single day when they're not asking for it or wearing anything provocative. They're just trying to do their job. So with examples like that in our minds and this happening every single day of the week, of the month, of the year, we have to make changes. So I'm relieved and really grateful uh, that the next time I am in Stroud with Stroud High School Girls or with the campaign group This Ends Now uh, and the teams or the next time I'm on a march or in front of uh, a, a group of people in our town hall dealing with these issues that I can point to the government backing this bill as yet another example of the government wanting to protect women and girls and being prepared to create the legislation to do so and bring our laws up to date. Yeah. Yeah.